This is Andy Tube, and I'm still working on my Singer Model 99K Cute, and I've been learning how to remove the needle bar and the thread take up system here, and uh, it's it's has some parts that are quite different than the other Singer. Uh, models that I have done which are uh, from this age and newer and I, I that's what this video is going to be about I'm going to remove all of those uh, parts and show you how how to do it and uh, put them back in but I want to give a little disclaimer to remind you that this this particular model is from 1966 and um, I know that Singer made quite a few different versions of the Model 99 uh, because I can find different uh, parts lists for different models like 99-11 and 13 and 26 and, and so forth. So if you if you have a model 99 it may look slightly different than this in some features like the bobbin winder and the the needle clamp and so forth so uh, just keep that in mind and the other disclaimer here is that i'm not going to show how to set the height of the needle bar during this video because i uh, frankly i haven't learned how to do it yet and I'll explain a little bit more about that when I when I get into this uh, feature right right here. And the last disclaimer is uh, I've been reminded to remind you that whenever you're using tools and chemicals and stuff, to be sure and wear your eye protection, right? And uh, I always just assume that people do that, but um, I do want to remind you of that. And look, if you get if you poke out your eye, you're not going to be able to watch my videos, and you're going to miss some cool stuff. So protect your eyes, please. I'm going to go through the different parts of this here, um, and I, I am going to take off first the the needle clamp, and to do that, I loosen the the needle clamp thumb screw, which is in the back here. I think most people know how to do this. And I know on some models that there's a little uh, jib inside the needle clamp here and a thread guard. This doesn't have it. This is a real uh, basic um, needle clamp and thumb screw. As a matter of fact, the first time I loosened it to, to remove a needle that was in there, an old needle, it just fell right off the bottom. <laughs> um, it does have this little pin called a stop pin right there and I think it's uh, it shows as a separate part with a part number on the part list but I think it's a pretty permanent installation uh, because I kind of fooled around seeing if I could get it out and it doesn't easily come out so it should it should be oh okay it shouldn't just fall out and you lose it but just be aware of that. So besides this uh, needle clamp and the thumb screw, um, of course you have the you have the whole needle bar. And one of the early videos I called it a stubby because it just seems uh, shorter than most of the needle bars that I have seen. But like most singers the needle bar um, goes into a needle bar connecting stud and you're seeing the front of it right here and a, and a, and a stud means it's it's got a bar coming off the back and on most of the singer machines um, you'll see a screw uh, here, a clamping screw, or to the side, or sometimes right in the center of the needle bar connecting stud, and that's that's what holds the needle bar into position. 
and I was puzzled by this for a while because I, I couldn't see how, how, how do I get the needle bar out of this connecting stud. Well, it turns out at the end of the stud, in the back, an access from outside the machine in the back through a, through a hole uh, back here, there's a set screw that goes directly into the back of the, of the connecting stud. Now the connecting stud is put into a piece um, right here that's called the needle bar connecting link. So the stud goes in the link and it's called a link because it links to the actual thread take up lever. And the thread take up lever is this piece whoop, let me move that up. Is this piece right here and the lever that comes out that you, you put the thread through. And that's that's what people see, you know, from the outside. So you've got the stud and the link to the take up lever. Um, connecting link. Right. Then over here from the top of the um, take up lever is um, a take up lever link that comes over here. See if I can get a little more light in there. That's this piece from the top of the take up lever over to here. And that this end of this take up lever link is anchored into the body of the machine. And it does that with a, a hinge stud, a link hinge stud. And what you're seeing here is the hinge stud cap screw. So this cap screw uh, screws into a stud that goes into the body of the a sewing machine and then that stud is held in place um, by a set screw that's accessed through a little hole over here. Okay, now there's an, one more part right in here that you can't see too well yet but you can see another cap screw here and there is a um, like a stud but this this piece right here if you see it if you can see it right right there uh, goes through all of this and it goes into the counterbalance back here and that's where this all of this gets its power is that counterbalance is on the end of the horizontal arm shaft there you can see that there and it's it's uh, it's got a big screw that holds it there and that arm shaft, the other end, is what the hand wheel is screwed into. So when the motor belt turns the hand wheel, the hand wheel turns the horizontal arm, including this counterbalance. And this piece is into the counterbalance and held by a set screw on the side of the counterbalance. And that's what gives all of this, the needle bar and the take up lever. It, that's what gives it power. Okay, and that piece is called the thread take up crank. And it, and it does act like a little crank there. It spins around like this, the stud of the crank that goes in there. Now that take up crank is held into the counterbalance by a set screw that's accessed through this bigger hole on the side over here.
you put a screwdriver down in there and and you take out that set screw and you put a screwdriver up here and take the set screw out of the link hinge stud and and then you can pull that away from the machine you can pull the the crank and the stud off of the body to release the parts but to do that you've got to remove the needle bar and as I said this needle bar that's being that's being held in here by the uh, connecting stud on this machine it's got a set screw accessible from the back and the hole is small and I could not get my my screwdriver in there because the bit holder is way too big and I only it only the bit only extends this much and that wasn't enough to reach the set screw inside so I had to dink around and I found this little uh, cheap screwdriver that was really a pocket screwdriver with the clip broke off that I used to use years ago uh, when I was a telephone man but it it's got room to fit in here in the harp and uh, even though it's not the best made uh, strongest screwdriver it I finally was able to make it work so to line up the set screw you have to lower the the link and the needle bar to the very bottom and you gotta you gotta find that screw it's a straight slot a set screw and you gotta kinda find it by touch because you can't you can't see if you backlight the machine here you can you can kinda see the edge of the screw sticking out back on the side but I found the best way to do it is just to put the the needle bar as low as it can go and you've got to kind of find the slot in the screw um, just by touch okay so when you find it it's it, you turn it left to loosen it and it's going to uh, you know start backing out and you can try twisting your uh, needle bar to make sure that yeah see it's starting to get loose it's still kind of firm in there but it is starting to I can twist it and move it up and down a little bit because if you back it out so far it starts hitting the inside of the body there and it, and it I thought it was stuck before but it just doesn't back out much it just kind of loosens enough see if I can raise it just a little and still it just loosens enough for you to get the needle bar loose <laughs> it's kind of weird but once it is loose you see it here you can you can pull it down like this and then turn the hand wheel so that the the uh, connecting stud moves to, uh, out of the way and then you can start pushing up the and let me get this yeah I think it was over like that and then I could bring up the needle bar and bring it out of the nose or the face of the machine and it's got this flat spot in the in the top in the back and that's where that set screw goes so you can see it for adjusting the height there's not much uh, there's not much room to adjust it there I'll show you when I put it back in you you can when you get the set screw in there you, you know you can you can just barely move it up and up and down a little bit the needle bar but with that to the back that puts the needle holder area in the front and it puts the thumb screw towards the hand wheel or the back so it's not it's not too bad putting it back in 
But once you get that out, now the, the connecting stud can just pull right out. Just like on the other machines I did. Except on this one, you see that screw that's in the back. And the screw will, when it's, when, when it's out of the, ma the machine, the screw will back out all the way. So there's, there's the stud. And there's the screw that you use to, to hold the needle bar. Okay. Then these other parts now, we've got to come over on this side and work through these two holes to loosen the set screws. And um, this one, the set screw is just right, right inside. It's a, it's a s smaller one, but you can actually you can actually see it in there and it's lefty loosey and the threads are in the body of the machine they're in the casting so uh, you can you can I'm sure you could back it out to a certain point and uh, leave it in there, but I, I'm always afraid I'm going to lose it. So that's a little light on it. That's the stud. I mean, that's the set screw for the hinge stud for the take-up lever link that anchors the take up lever. Okay, so there's one more set screw that's accessed here, but you have to you have to turn the hand wheel, and you have to get um, because it sets into the counterbalance. You have to get it in a certain uh, position, so when you come over here, you'll be able to see that uh, screw and I think it's when this hangs straight down from the left let me look over here and see yeah I'll tell you what let me get a, a screwdriver on it oops yeah see that's that's the problem pushing on it with the screwdriver I moved it a little bit because the counterbalance just wants to spin on the arm. Maybe I can do it from the side by touch. See, you wouldn't have the camera here, so you could put a light. You could probably put better lighting in there. To see what you're doing. Yeah, actually, it... it there, kind of about there. Seems level. Whoops, I was turning it to the right again. I'm just going to take that set screw out. It's probably going to fall into the bottom of the face here. But I just, I want to get it out of there. Yep, there it goes. Did you see it fall here? There it is. So it's bigger um, than the other one that we took out before. It's just a, it's a flush mounting. That's the diameter of it. Okay. Now. Um, I usually move um, the, cr the crank over, the take-up crank over here, so I can get, you know, kind of to, to, to pull on this. Because it's such a tight fit, 
that they they both have to come out at the same time and what I found on mine was they, they were really gunked up there was a lot of old varnished oil in there and I could hardly get them to budge so I put some oil on and let it uh, sit for a while and that helped a little bit so I put some more oil on let it sit for a couple hours that helped a little bit more but I, I just so I finally um, used a hair dryer just on warm not hot and uh, after about five minutes of that I was able to put a rag over there and pull it so but but both of these uh, studs have to come like straight out at the same time there okay, let's push this push this body back here so I got a little room to show you so there we go right so this is the take up lever link hinge stud and this cap screw is actually a screw that screws into there and the stud is held in the machine so if you wanted to you could take out the cap screw from the stud and just pull it off but I don't know if you can see this one's kind of chewed up but these are real easy to damage these little thin cap screws and the, the um, slot is kind of curved it's not real flat inside because the top is so shallow I think they had maybe a special little screwdriver so I've just gotten the habit to take out the set screw and pull it out with the stud uh, I have taken out the uh, cap screw in the past like if you saw my 404 series but I usually don't I usually just pull out the whole stud and I put cleaner right down in the oil hole and clean it out and then dry it and flood it with oil and I've never had a problem doing that and the same thing with this uh, cap screw oh wait if you do want to take out this cap screw um, most of them I'm not sure of this machine but most of them you it's reverse threaded you turn it to the right to loosen it and you turn your screwdriver to the right to loosen that screw um, this is the same kind of uh, screw, uh, screw and stud and that's the same story I, I take that set screw out from the side um, where this slips into the uh, counter balance there and it's easier just to pull the whole thing out as a piece but look if, if this broke I would have to loosen all this stuff to to be able to just replace this part but usually they just sell the whole thing like this from a vintage machine and this um, needle bar connecting link um, goes on the back of the crank stud like that so it's between the crank and the counterbalance okay and that's called the crank because you, you can see that you can see the offset action there right you see how that piece cranks around the stud like that okay and then of course the, the front of this link is where that um, needle bar connecting stud goes in just like that remember the set screw in the back so that's how the whole thing looks and it kind of sets in there like that 
So you can take these pieces off. I took these off and I put them in my uh, ultrasonic cleaner and cleaned them. And yeah, there was a lot of old years and years and maybe decades of, uh, you know, oil and grit and stuff in there. But they sure they sure cleaned up nice, no doubt. Mhm. Mm then I gave them a light coat of oil, and uh, after cleaning them, I went around to all the oil ports, like I said, and uh, you know I just kept putting oil in there and turning it until oil was leaking out to to flush the cleaner and water and everything out of there and then I, I of course you want to you want to clean the ports that these go into and you want to clean the needle bar bushing down here and then put, put some oil on there too so that when you put it back together you know it'll it'll slide in pretty good and uh, what I found before I took this off was that I actually had some resistance. This, this uh, actually had not been reinstalled properly. And I didn't notice before turning the hand wheel everything was smooth. But when I had the hand wheel off, um, you know, when I was doing the bobbin winder and stuff, and I would just grab the end of the arm shaft and turn it, I found that every every time it came up to a certain point, it would start to bind until it got past that point. And it was real noticeable then, when you with this heavy, heavy hand wheel on and you're turning it, it wasn't noticeable. But it was really noticeable uh, without the hand wheel. So I'm going to show you when you put it back together how to avoid how to do it right so you don't get this binding. Because all these clearances are super close. And if anything up here binds, it just affects the whole machine. Okay. So I'm, I want to put this back in now. And what I'm going to do is... Um, see, I've got to get that. I'm going to move this... Uh, hole down to the bottom there I think or maybe about there because I want to put that back in and I have to put the studs back in at the same time but first I have to put this um, connecting link right and I have to remember which way it goes if you notice this, uh, this piece here is a little bit shorter than this piece here. And you see how this sticks out farther for the connecting stud. But before I took it off, you, you look, and this part is, has a part number here and the word Samanco stamped here with the O at the top. So an easy way for me to remember is when I go to put this back uh, onto the onto the uh, whoops onto the crank, I want the O in Samanco up and facing me. So I just slide it on like that. Okay, and then that crank stud has a flat spot for the set screw. And the take-up lever uh, hinge stud has a depressed area in the center. It doesn't have a flat spot. Well, it kind of has a flat spot in the center all the way around. And that's, and that's made because this is where you adjust your clearance. So I'll show you. So with my crank back on, right... I've got to get these uh, studs going in here at the same time. And 
and uh, you know you can do it it's just a little it's just one of those little fiddly things and sometimes it helped to to wiggle a little and one gets in farther than the other and then it won't move yeah There. I think that, I guess you heard that snap in, huh? <laughs> okay. To to get uh, to tighten these up, the first thing you want to do is tighten the 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 uh, crank one because it's very easy to determine the position. You just push it in against that counterbalance is so that it's flush you feel back there and it's flush their their pieces are together so that's real easy so you just turn that over to the position there where you can look in here and you can see that uh, set screw I think I can see that hole now so I will get my little set screw I forgot it's the big it's the bigger set screw first Get that in and get that into the counterbalance weight there. There we go. I forgot I got to be at a little bit of an angle there. Now it's going. And then with my thumb, I'm going to push hard on that stud to push it all the way against the counterbalance when I tighten it, because there cannot be any play there. You do not want any play there. And there's no adjustment to be made there. The adjustment is all up on this stud. So I'll just try that. Make sure that's good in there. Okay. Then I think at this point, uh, I'm going to get my needle bar back together. So. I'll turn this up out of the way and I'm going to drop my needle bar down in there. Okay. And then I'm going to put the uh, connecting stud and I'm going to I'm going to turn that screw in and until it's almost ready to come into the opening and hit the needle bar because that's just less turns I'm going to have to make when it's in the machine and this particular one it doesn't matter which way is up okay so I'm going to put that in there now so that I can slide the needle bar up into it and remember the flat spot remember the flat spot on the needle bar right here that's going to face the hand wheel there we go so I verify where my flat spot is turn it towards the hand wheel and bring it down so the flat spot would be in the middle of this and I'm going to lower 
the needle bar remember because I have to go over on this side Ow. I have to go over on this side and access that set screw from the hole back here I'm really glad they changed this like when I do the 301 4 01, 404, the Rocketeers, 500, 503. Um, this clamping screw is in the front. I don't have to. I don't have to deal with this anymore. It's just. It's just kind of hard to get that. Get that lined up here. You can't, you just can't see in there very good. There, you know, I have the tension out so I can see in there some, but, and then you've got to find the slot kind of by hand. But now I have, so I'm just going to make sure that that flat spot is going to line up. There. There. I'm not going to tighten it all the way because I want to show you how you tell that you're on the flat spot is because before you tighten it all the way you'll be able to move the needle bar up and down about that much. That means the set screw is on the flat spot and you can move the needle bar in the range. Okay if you if you can just go up and down your screws not in there and if you put the screw in and it won't move up and down a little bit at first that means you're not on the flat spot and you're gonna have to to turn the needle bar to line up that flat spot okay now I gotta go back in there and do that all over again but once, once you know you're on the flat spot, um, then you go ahead and tighten that screw um, nice, and, nice and firm. So you don't want your needle bar wiggling loose. Okay, so now I've got that set screw nice and tight. My needle bar is firm. This stud is in all the way and tightened with the set screw firmly. Alright, this is looking good now. This is tight. This stud is tight. We got that set screw on the flat spot of um, the crank stud. And what we have left to do is the link hinge stud that's got the flat spot all the way around and the reason for that is this is where you see there's a little uh, I get some light you see there's a little bit of play there where this one you put in tight all the way back flush so there's no movement this one there's purposely a little bit of movement available so that as you tighten the hinge screw you can rotate everything and make sure that it doesn't bind that it lines up even because if you if you put this one in all the way and tighten it too chances are that someplace during this rotation cycle and it's usually right about this area is going to bind like that okay so that's why you do this one last and that's why it's a little bit uh, adjustable in or out get my little set screw and put it on my spring screwdriver you see that Harlan I use these a lot thank you I didn't even know these existed and my my friend Harlan one time emailed me and he said hey you have some of these right and I said I don't even know what they are <laughs> so he bought me a couple 
at, at a, a, a like an estate sale and he mailed them to me and these are so handy because of these little tricky places look you, it, it holds the screw and then when you want to release you just push in on this handle in the center and it pushes the, the tips back together right now they're spread apart to hold the screw okay so uh, I want to get up in there and start that screw into there and I'm not worried so much about pushing it front to back as I want to start doing this turning the hand wheel or the the arm shaft if you have the hand wheel off and then slowly tightening that set screw while you're doing it because that will usually prevent um, binding now if you get up here like I have the teensiest tiny amount of play if I get up here and I had a whole lot of play I would probably loosen the set screw and do it again but the fact that I slowly tightened it while turning this it kind of settles in its natural balanced position okay and now that I've got that in, I'll release that uh, set screw. And I'll put a stronger screwdriver. I don't think those spring drivers are really made to, to like, uh, bear down, you know, so much on a screw. They're more to help you get it into position and get it ready to tighten. So now that I've got it in there, I'll use my Chapman screwdriver to, to tighten it good and tight. Okay. Look at that. Wee. Okay, and then of course I would oil it up. And again, um, I read a little bit how to set the height of this, but I, I think it's almost self-setting. But um, we'll see when, when I learn how to set the timing and stuff. I think that's when you set the height on it. <laughs> so that's how to, to remove the uh, needle bar and the whole thread take up uh, system on the Singer model. Um, 99k it was interesting to me the the differences this was the main difference you know with the set screw coming from the outside in the back of the machine and um, the set screw positions on the side over here are different than the newer machines but they're, they're fine they're very accessible the basic parts and everything are the same, and they've been the same for 150 years, you know. Look at that. So, one thing I didn't take out was this tension pin releasing lever back in here. And usually when I have the needle bar out, there's a screw down in here that you take out. But this has got some kind of a pin set from the back. Like 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 this pin that puts this lever in here. There's it's a it's a this is for the this is for uh, something else. That's for the thumb screw on the faceplate. So uh, I'm I'm not going to mess with that. I'll clean this um, you know in place. I won't have a problem with that. So. And remember, your 99 can be a, a little bit different up in here, especially the needle bar can have a jib that holds a thread guide and stuff. But thanks for watching the video. Uh, it was interesting to me to learn about this. So if you have a 99K or you're interested in them, these small but terrible machines, um, maybe you can learn a little bit as I go along. I sure am. Hope to see you next time on the next... Um, 
video of cute but I have over 350 videos now on my channel so there might be something else there you like your comments and questions and subscriptions are, are welcome take care